what's up diy fam and welcome back to my channel this week it's been a while i actually did a full-blown pattern and sewing tutorial in one video and you guys are in for a treat in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make this asymmetric circle cut i don't know if i'll call it a top or a dress but it can act as both i was inspired by a picture i saw on pinterest and i decided to do a simplified version for you guys make sure to watch up until the end because i showed how to make the pattern and i went ahead to sew using scuba fabric i chose this really cool purple shade because i thought it was perfect for the cold weather in the uk right now and yes if you'd like to see how this garment is made make sure to keep on watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump straight to the tutorial I'm going to be working with the following materials for this dress design my fabric of choice is this purple scuba fabric it has a good amount of stretch in it and it's thick enough to not require lining i got about four meters because of the length of the skirt of the dress i also got my pattern master set square my marker pen my tape measure my scissors a chalk as well as some pins the patterns i'll be working with is the basic bodies and my sleeve which i have linked down below for anyone that hasn't seen it yet because from these patterns i just go ahead to shrink them so they work with the stretch fabric that i'm going to be using i also have my long gorilla and my pattern paper and let's get straight into the pattern for this video the first thing i did in terms of pattern was i duplicated my front back and basic sleeves up to the waistline and then i went ahead to reduce the waist by about an inch from the waistline and half an inch from the underarm and that way i got rid of the dart i also reduced the shoulder by 1.5 inches and retained the same neckline this way the pattern gets smaller and so when I cut it on stretch fabric it stretches out to my actual body measurement. I went ahead to also reduce the back by about half an inch all the way around and 1.5 inches along the shoulder so it matches the front shoulder seam. I retained the back neckline and then I went ahead to do our center back dart on the back of the pattern. For the sleeve, I dropped the sleeve head by about 1.5 inches and took about an inch to half an inch from each side and then the length is about 14 inches or 36 centimeters which is around my elbow length. You can decide to have yours longer or shorter. I went ahead to go and add a 1 centimeter seam allowance all the way around my pattern so this allows me to join pieces together and you can decide to work with half an inch or a whole inch but I find working with one centimeter to be just enough. I went ahead to create a collar pattern which would sit into the neckline of the dress and the collar dimension is 15 inches long and 1.6 inches wide. Just make sure you measure around your neck and reduce that measurement by about 1 inch so the collar stretches out to fit the neckline. So I went ahead to cut out my patterns after adding my seam allowance and I'm, I'm making my extra collar pattern. I cut out my front. You'll be cutting the front on the folded edge of the fabric so you have one piece for the front for the back you need to cut two separate pieces so we have a center back seam for the sleeve we need to cut two and for the collar piece you just need one piece which you would join along the center back fold in half and fix into the neckline of the dress the last piece of pattern we'll need is a circle skirt i already have a dedicated video on how to make a circle skirt pattern i will link that down below if you haven't seen it already and it's pretty easy pretty straightforward to do but just remember to use your the new waistline measurement from this shrunken down front and back bodies to create the waistline that this circle skirt will have when you're calculating it so once you've made your full circle skirt ensure that the length of the skirt is the longest part of your dress so if you want your dress to be really long up to your ankle just ensure that that's the entire length of the skirt because after doing that we go ahead to cut the asymmetricness into the skirt on the front so i wanted something that was 
a little bit shorter on the side and then tapered down to the rest of the skirt so i'm just marking about 10 inches down from the waistline on this side and with free hand i'm going to draw a curve that connects that 10 inches point to the side of the skirt and it helps when you cut a full circle because then once you cut out this particular piece that you don't want and you open up your pattern you can go ahead and cut your skirt in one piece so I'm just going in here to draw my line define it as much as I want using my pattern master at setting point until I'm happy with my curve Using my pattern master and my very dark marker pen, I'm just going in here to define this side of my curve, connecting it to the hem in such a way that it flows smoothly and there are no angled points. So once you're happy with your curve, you can either decide to do this asymmetric shape in such a way that the shortest part sits at the center front, but I want something that was a little bit to the side. Once you're happy with that, just go ahead to cut out this bottom piece because we will not be needing that. So this is what the skirt pattern looks like. And thankfully, because it's a whole circle, I'm just going to go ahead to pin this down on my pattern pin this on my fabric sorry and then cut out the bottom half of the dress so i'm experiencing an issue placing this pattern on the fabric i have as you can see the fabric is not wide enough and i even had to rotate it slightly off the grain what do i mean slightly completely off the grain it's more it's more like a bias cut now and you can see this edge down here and that edge up there are out of the fabric so i would have to modify the fabric a little bit so the pattern fits but if you want to make this shape of asymmetric bottom circle skirt for yourself it's either you make it shorter generally or you join two fabric pieces together so it's wide enough to take the entire sort of width of the skirt or just buy a fabric that is super wide it's one of the three options but i'm going to sort of go with the bias cut bottom for the skirt because i still have to cut the top with this much fabric left so i hope everything i hope everything fits <laughs> In a bit to make the pattern fit the fabric, I went back to reduce the skirt generally by cutting that front edge of the pattern a little bit in and I cut in the back as well and I rotated the pattern in such a way that it fit the fabric. This is not really an ideally a right way to do this but this was the only way that the pattern could fit into the fabric. So once I was happy with the overall length and shape, I pinned down my pattern on the fabric and I'm just going in here to cut out my skirt pattern around the waistline, around the hem until everything is nice and cut out. So I'm going to go in and pin the top parts, so my front, my back, my sleeve, my collar. I'm going to pin them down along the grain of the fabric and cut out the necessary pieces I need. For the sleeve, you need two, one for the left and one for the right hand side. For the front, you just need one piece, just ensure you cut it on the folded edge of the fabric. For the back, you need two pieces, so it's okay if you cut it somewhat in the middle of your fabric. I'm just going in here to cut out my shoulder, my arm curve for my back piece. And don't forget to cut your notches along the armhole, along the center back, on your sleeve, on your center front, because these notches make assembling the whole garment a whole lot easier. So these are all of my pieces. I have my one front piece, I have my collar, I have my back, two of them. I have my sleeve, two of them as well. I also have my skirt piece, which is 
one piece and it doesn't have any seams and because the fabric is stretchy and because of how we've made the pattern we'll not need to fix any zip on this garment whatsoever which is a great way of saving time and saving resources so the first thing in terms of sewing is i'm going to be joining up the center back and i'm just going to go ahead and pin together the two back pieces together along the center back and i'm going to take this to my machine and sew on a one centimeter seam allowance joining my left hand side to the right hand side of the back piece so i have one piece i'm going to attach to the front along the shoulders to secure my seams, I'm going back in with a zigzag stitch in a matching color and this just makes the inside of the garment look really nice. It's not really necessary because this fabric is knitted so it doesn't fray but I just thought it was an extra security to ensure my garment looks good even on the inside. So next up, I'm going to be joining the front to the back along the shoulders. I'm just matching them together like this. I'm going to add a few pins to prevent them from moving around. Joining left and right shoulders together. And I'm going to be sewing them on a one centimeter seam allowance using my domestic machine on a normal straight stitch. I worked with average tension and a stitch length that was around nine, which is not very is not very tight, neither is it long. So average tension, average stitch, and not forgetting to do my zigzag stitch afterwards to secure my seams. So this is what my top looks like right now. And I'm going to be attaching my sleeves a little differently today. We're going to be fixing them on the flat. So I'm going to be taking the sleeve for this side ensuring that i put right sides together of the sleeve to the right side together of my top piece i have pinned the shoulder points together and now i'm pinning the side edges together like so once i pin these three crucial points what i do is i stretch the middle bits to fit each other so when you find the midpoint of your front sleeve curve and your front armhole i pin that middle point together i do the same for the back I just add a few pins because the fabric is stretchy it's easy to fix that sort of sleeve curve into the armhole so I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing this particular sleeve into this side of the garment on a one centimeter seam allowance using my normal straight stitch with average tension and average stitch length going from point A all the way to point B and after joining it in I went back to do my zigzag stitch just to secure my seam and to keep it intact. After joining both sleeves into the top this is what it looks like and the beautiful thing about fixing the sleeve through this method is what you have to do after this point is to pin the side seams together so if you pin the side seam of the sleeve the side seam of the actual body with one continuous stitch you are able to sew up the entire side seam of the garment and this just ensures that you know that point where your sleeve and your actual body meet they align even nicer this this is just a method and a way to ensure that that actually happens so using a normal straight stitch in my machine i'm sewing on a two centimeter seam allowance because i looked at the garments and i realized that this was going to be a little bit too big for me and i wanted the top of the dress to be fitted so when you're making a pattern just ensure that you either take a little bit out or you just sew a little bit in to ensure that it fits nice and snugly since it's stretchy fabric so after sewing up both side seams, I went back in, I trimmed out the excess of the seams and then I did my zigzag stitch very close to the edge so it looks like it was an actual overlocker that finished up the side seams of the garment. So this is what the top half looks like, it's looking really good, really tidy and I'm happy so far with the progress. So once that is done, we'll need to fix the collar into the top of the dress. And because the collar is one rectangular piece we need to first of all make it a circle so i've joined together the two center back points i fixed a pin and we're going to be sewing up that open side of the collar so we have one round piece to fix into the neckline of the garment so once that is so stitched up i'm going to be folding it in half like so and at that particular stitch point is going to match with the center back seam so all of the seams of the collar and the garment sits at the back and you don't see anything from the front 
So I'm just going to take a pin and I'm going to pin this particular point down and then I'm going to turn the garment inside out so I can pin the rest of the collar into the neckline of the top. Next up, I'm going to be pinning center front point of the collar to the center front point of the top. So we have those two center points marked and pinned down in place. After that, we sort of stretch the collar to fit the neckline. So because the collar is smaller in length compared to your neckline, the way I did this was I found the midpoint of the collar along the sides and I pinned that to the shoulder points you would need a little bit more for the front curve because the front curve is deeper compared to the back which is comp relatively straighter compared to the front so you might have to like repin and stretch out pieces for it to fit in a way that works so once everything is nicely pinned down in place and you're happy with that you take this to your machine and you sew on however much seam allowance you have since i'm working with one centimeter i'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance and because there is a lot of stretching and fitting and easing i suggest you take your time when you're sewing a collar in stretchy fabric into a neckline in stretchy fabric because if they don't match and you have puckering or pleats it shows along the neck of your garment so once you stitch that in place and everything looks nice and neat I'm going back in with my zigzag stitch in the same thread color and secure my neckline seam so I had to give this a good press to relax all of the seams around the neckline around the sleeve so everything looks nice and flat and this is what the top looks like so far it came out a little bit too tight when I tried it on but thankfully because I don't have extensions or braids I think I can get away with wearing the neckline so just be aware of that when you are creating this style for yourself so once I saw done I'm going to work on the skirt I just going to grab my skirt and I'm going to pin that into the top along the waistline so because the top has center back and sort of side seam points and center front points I'm going to be pinning the skirt into the waist of the top along those four points first. So side seam to side seam, center back to center back, center front to center front. With the skirt, I notched, I remember to notch those points when I cut the pattern so it's easier for me to connect pieces together. So I'm just going in here to add a few more pins along the waist. So when everything matches together, we're going to be sewing the two waistlines in place on a one centimeter seam allowance on my domestic machine. Now sewing using a normal stretch stitch, I'm attaching the waistline of the top to the waistline of the skirt so that connects both pieces together and we end up with a dress. So once I'm done sewing this connecting stitch, I'm going to go back in with my zigzag stitch to secure the seam of this particular waistline. This is the very last step you need to do in order to finish this dress design. With that done, I went ahead to give it a good press. I pressed on my waistline, my neckline, my shoulder points, and because the fabric doesn't fray, I didn't need to hem any of the edges. This is the finished outcome. I just left the, the sleeve hem and the dress hem raw the way it is and it looks really, really good. I particularly like the color of the fabric. I was very unsure of the color when I picked it out at the fabric shop, but I think it worked really well with the design and it worked really well with the way I styled it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video all the same. If you did, please leave your thoughts, your comments and your thoughts down below. If you'll be recreating this, don't forget to tag me on social media at Kim Dave Designs. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are. Bye.